Thank you, Eric. Uh, my name is Gareth Thomas. I'm the President and CEO of West Haven Ventures. And today I'm going to be talking about a relatively, relatively new, uh, less than a year, high-grade gold discovery in southwestern British Columbia. And uh, it's titled Exploring British Columbia's Newest Gold Belt. I will be making some uh, cautionary and forward-looking statements throughout this presentation, so please keep that in mind. Uh, West Haven's four main projects, they're all based on this emerging Spences Bridge Gold Belt. You can see in the bottom right hand of the screen there, there's a map of BC and inset you'll see the Spences Bridge, it's lightly, uh, there we are. Um, so the Spences Bridge Gold Belt is a 110 kilometer long Cretaceous volcanic belt. Uh, you'll notice the, the red uh, properties are all West Haven's 100% owned properties, 35,000 hectares in total. Uh, the rest of the gray area is predominantly being staked by a group called Talisker Resources, used to be called Sable. Um, try to make a long story short, last year about this time we had a CA signed with Talisker. They were up on the property, we're looking at some uh, drill core and they thought they better get into this before anybody else does. So uh, we made a deal with Talisker. We had a 10 kilometer area of interest around all our properties. At that point, it wouldn't have given them, given them a whole lot of uh, ground if they were to keep that. So we made a deal to shrink that to five kilometers uh, area interest. So anything you can see lightly, uh, just around here, you'll see the, uh, the checkered, that's anything inside of there, West Haven has a two and a half two and a half percent NSR and anything Talisker discovers and anything on the outskirts of that, we have a right of first refusal. And that's a total of 225,000 hectares, uh, which is a, a, about 86% of this belt that West Haven has either 100% ownership or a, a tow-in with Talisker. And Talisker has been busy on the belt since May. Uh, their goal is to collect 4,000 silt samples, which will be a a tremendous amount of, um, of data they're collecting and they're already seeing some very good new discoveries so we're, we're rooting for them. All our properties are road accessible. Um, in fact, the Coquihalla runs right through the shovel nose as you'll see shortly. And um, some of our, our recent discoveries, well, within a year, you'll see our discovery there, SN 1814 was 17.7 meters of 24 and a half grams per ton gold. That's really what, what got our stock moving, if you will, and really our big discovery hole. We followed that up with uh, 100 meters to the south of that. We, we hit uh, 46.9 meters of just under nine grams per ton gold. Um, so our stock took quite a spike after that. And uh, a, a big note here is that management, uh, we're well aligned with shareholders, uh, owning about 38% uh, of the shares outstanding. A uh, quick uh, company snapshot here. Uh, West Haven is listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange Venture under the symbol WHN. There's a look at our uh, stock price there. Uh, we jumped 980% uh, after those results in October, and uh, which made us the top gainer on the Toronto Stock Exchange Venture last year, which is not always uh, easy to follow up. As you can see, a th few dips there. You're only as good as your last drill hole, we found out. Um, but we're, we're slowly getting back up to around the, the buck 12 range, I think we are today. A little under 90 million shares outstanding, a little under 100 million shares fully diluted. Uh, today about a, a $95 million market cap. Uh, as of Q2, we had um, 1.3 million in working cap. That's, that's lower than that now. And uh, the important thing to note here is the, the graph on, the, I believe it's a Lassonde graph. Uh, to the left there, we see the star where West Haven is. And that's what we, this is still in its infancy. A lot of people think this is, uh, you know, we're already looking for a resource or we're in a small thing, but this is uh, less than a year old in a new area that we keep drilling multiple high-grade intercepts here. So it's, uh, like I said, very, very early days. So um, we think we're just at the bottom there and, and, and lots to give. Uh, I'm not going to have time to go through, through all this, but uh, I'll just point out our exploration manager, Peter Fischel, who was around here earlier. He's uh, often between merit, or often in merit, I should say, but he happens to be here today. Uh, he spent 12 years at uh, Kupal in Russia, uh, another low sulfidation epithermal 
system, very similar Cretaceous rock. So we're, we're very fortunate to get uh, Peter on board and he's really the one that, that cracked the nut on, on this, if you will. So we're very uh, fortunate to have him. A lot, of these, uh, a lot of these guys are actually here today, so uh, please go by the booth and, and chat to them. I should note uh, our newest hire, Sean Thompson, some of you guys probably know him from Atlantic or Kamenak, two of the biggest uh, uh, takeovers in, in the junior mining space in the last few years, so we're, we're hoping uh, three's, uh, three's a charm. Three's a charm? No, yeah. Three's a crowd. <laughs> three's a crowd. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we hope he brings us some luck anyway. Uh, here's just a, yeah, yeah, well, we can talk about that later. Um, this is just another map of the, the Spences Bridge uh, gold belt outlined in gray there. Um, uh, our properties, again, just to note here, the two and a half hour drive from Vancouver. So that, that's literally, that's not, uh, you can get there without hitting a stop sign from, from North Vancouver. So it's uh, very convenient, well located. Um, and you'll notice there the Highland Valley, that's the largest open pit mine in Canada, 15th largest in the world. You got uh, the New Afton to the north by Kamloops, you got Copper Mountain, you got Braylorn, you got Black Dome, uh, a very good jurisdiction. A lot of people are also, uh, you know, you're in BC, you're in a bad, uh, but for us it's been nothing but, uh, it, it's, been, it's been great, great place to work, so. Um, and, and great all year round uh, working as well, We're being, we'll be drilling all year round there. Uh, here's the shovel nose property, which I'll be I'll just be talking about that today um, As you see there again the Coquihalla highway off to the left of the the slide power line to the north and a little over 15,000 uh, hectares uh, the south zone Right there is where our discovery uh, has happened. We've been we've been exploring uh, and drilling in the tower the line six the Mick uh, as there, it was kind of low-hanging fruit. There was outcrops there with really good-looking, uh, with a lot of good-looking gold mineralization and, and a lot of uh, uh, good soil anomalies, as you'll see shortly. But the thing to, to take away here is the majority of this property is still very, very underexplored. We've had um, about a dozen or so field crew this year soil sampling around the area, prospecting. We've been doing ground geophysics, and we just did airborne last year as well, and there's a lot of targets here. Uh, this is a mag map, airborne magnetic survey, which we did last uh, November, um, 75 meter spacing. Uh, another thing to keep in mind here is the magnetic lows, the blues or the, the greens, and you'll see the, once again, the south zone is, is circled there. Um, you'll see a, a big cluster of, of anomalies to the, the east, north, or sorry, west, northwest of the south zone. Those are all uh, in, in high sort of standing domes, and that's predominantly where we think we're we're out of the system there, hence we've moved down to the south, but very little in a way of, of, of soil geochemistry anomalies in the south zone. Then we've unearthed all these other ones throughout the property in the last uh, year or so. So a lot of follow-up targets here, and we'll be looking to, to drill test uh, at least one just to the south here. We're hoping to get to that within the next couple of weeks. Uh, we think we've got that, that good enough to go that target then um, multiple other targets to test here and and the mag lows are where you want to be so we're very uh, keen to test those areas more to come on that uh, just to look at the the area for people who've never seen it or been there just the lay of the land um, that's all forestry so we haven't taken down those trees that's been there before so once again a, a good spot to be for uh, there's a, a south zone drill plan map, some recently announced uh, drill results. Um, SN 1910, uh, that was 52 meters of 5.13 grams per ton gold, 18.5 uh, meters of, of 11.39 grams per ton gold. Thing to keep in mind there is that's, that's a second vein zone we've hit there now. So that was the first time we've hit high grade mineralization in the second vein zone. Then at SN 1915, we hit 7.11 meters of 9.42 grams per ton in a third vein zone. So as we move uh, here, doing sort of 50 meter centers and moving more to the northeast, we start hitting more parallel stacked veins. So we're, uh, a lot of people say, why aren't you guys going along strike? Well, we are, but it's, it's hard to jump down to the south when we're uh, hitting high grade gold as we move north. So um, that being said, uh, to the south, we just drilled recently, there's just, just as of today, um, 
hole 22 here, 100 meters south of hole 19, where we had a major fault, uh, a horse or an uplifted fault. And uh, these are pictures of uh, quartz vet breccia veins with banded adularia and gingro, which is a very good sign for gold and silver, silver mineralization. So we're assays pending here, but we think we've once again, our, our Peter's sort of cracked the nut on what's going on to the south. So we're going to continue on uh, going down to the south as well and adding strike to this. Uh, some highlights, I'm, I'm out of time here, so I'll, um, once again, these will be on our website, just uh, pretty impressive since last year, since September, um, some of those drill intercepts we've been drilling. Uh, just a bit of arm waving, um, definitely a uh, forward-looking statement here, but Ishikari Mine in Japan uh, produced uh, 8 million ounces at about 30 grams per tonne. This is just to give you an idea of, of where we are with our, thir with our three zones. And the, the idea is we're gonna have something similar. Th this is how these are, they come in these swarms uh, or clusters, if you will, and this is what we're hoping we're gonna be finding multiple zones. We're up to three now. Hopefully there's gonna be a lot more to come, hence really in our infancy stage here. And that's uh, in, in conclusion, a uh, large land package, as I said, um, 225,000 hectares to be explored, uh, district scale potential. Uh, we're drilling uh, 20,000 meters this year. We're about halfway to that um, potential to get a third rig going here as well. And um, yeah, that's it. Thank you uh, very much. And like I said, uh, we got a booth out there and, and lots of people manning it. So please come by. Thank you.